The floor literally appears as you take the next step. You have no clue where you're going. The illusion is that you think you know where you're going. And the problem is that oftentimes you're right with a lot of the elements in your life. And that life has become predictable and boring. And therefore all your creative energy goes towards what's not possible and creating problems where there don't need to be problems if you spend more space and time in just not knowing and just living from the now in the freshness of the adventure of the calling and placing a step and placing a step and placing a step and placing a step and allowing the steps to show you what's most exciting. And as long as you don't have any fear to act, when it does feel right to act, when the timing does show up, then that's a completely safe way to do it. And in fact, I recommend it. And then you learn, over time, you learn to completely trust that. To the point where you know that if you try hard to make it work, when it's not in flow, when it's not just the timing isn't showing up, you're actually creating problems and detours where if you just waited one more day or two more weeks or whatever, it just showed up on its own. It was the perfect timing and you didn't need all the time and resources you thought you needed to create it. Right? Whereas if you then start creating it prematurely, you do need all that time and resources to create it. The universe is very efficient in its organizing principle, but only if you're connected to your calling will you be sensitive enough to notice what's truly in flow and what's not in flow versus what you're resisting or not resisting. Sometimes it's a little difficult from the outside in to tell if someone's just resisting or postponing or if they're waiting for the proper moment and it's not there yet. But when you become sensitive enough and practice enough, it becomes easier and easier and easier. And then you're just like, yep. You just know that the best thing is going to happen so swiftly when you don't try to force it before its moment arises. And then the moment arises. When it doesn't, it's like, oh, there it is. But then there's no resistance either. There's no like stories or like, wait a second, I'm having an emotion. What, 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 what. I'm not saying it never happens, right? But there's just this complete availability to like, oh, there it is, naturally on its own. Boop. And then it happens in a fraction of the time if you were to then if you were to actually try and do it and plan it. And if you could live like this with everything, it means you compress the amount of time and energy you lose working and doing so many things that are otherwise done in a hundredth of the amount of energy and time and space it would need. So now that means you can do a hundred more things within the same period of time or 99 more things. With the same amount of energy, you can create a hundred times as much, so to speak, because you're trusting in the timing of things. But this requires that you're free of resistance. And this requires that you have a positive relationship an it's possible relationship with uncertainty which means that you need to have a positive conscious relationship to your calling or to who you are, what you are, come from that state of being and be confident in it. I want to just underline that, the importance of not associating, or it can be associated but not, not mistaken, your calling and your identity, your mission, your purpose, whatever it is, with the vehicle that you choose to express it through. So it's very tempting, especially if you're new to being able to recognize what your calling is and being able to come from that state of being no matter what. When that's still kind of novel to you and you're somewhat wobbly at it, but you're getting better at it and you start getting like a vision that comes from that connection to that calling. And maybe just to start a business or a project or organization that can fulfill that intention or a series of intentions that are very conducive to channeling that calling energy into people's lives. It, it requires experience or just remarkable clarity and integrity and authenticity to be able to, throughout that tra trajectory of starting that business or organization or project or whatever it is, to consistently remember that the calling is not the thing, it's not the extension. And so, in this way, you're able to always navigate, to always course correct, to always adjust because you're not identifying the truth with the means. So just make sure that you really, really see this, that you cannot do your calling, you cannot create your calling, you cannot become your calling, so to speak. Right? So anything that's got anything to do with linearity, anything that's not here right now, basically, 
is going to be an extension, an expression, a means, an avenue for that calling to crystallize itself into this world. And that's beautiful. But the vehicle changes. You, know, you don't always drive the same car. Sometimes your car is not available or you need to upgrade. So don't get attached to the car. You want to be able to get to where you want to get to. You want to be able to transport your body. It's not about the vehicle. So if you can maintain that awareness, then it's easy for you to quit your job or take on a new job or create a new business or change the business around or redesign it from the ground up or fire a couple of people, hire another couple of people or whatever is required for that change because your fulfillment comes from the clarity with which you've learned to recognize the truth of what you are and you've seen that it's independent, it exists independent from anything that you could ever do or create or manifest. Now, the more you start manifesting and seeing the distinction between your calling and your manifestation of the calling, which is beautiful, it's, there's no separation there, but the calling it supersedes. The calling is far superior to any one of its manifestations. It can be housed in all kinds of different bodies, right? And that is what's happening. The calling actually is universal. It just has different flavors, depending on the blueprint of that individual lifetime. And so it's housed, the one calling, if you will, is already housed in an infinite amount of bodies. And so the same goes on a smaller micro, cost, micro scale is you are able to house your calling, your portion of that calling, into all kinds of different avenues and vehicles. So keep that flexibility. Always recognize that ultimately no circumstance, that you are not dependent on any circumstance. Since we understand the power of environment upon the unconscious mind of every human being on this world, now that we're aware of that, it is our responsibility to also alter the environment as one of the means in which we get to inspire humanity. So those prototypes are excellent examples of what works, what doesn't work, optimize it, and bring that out into humanity until every city is designed that way, right? Until every social structure is designed that way so that everyone that gets born into the civilization is naturally focused on what is possible. S to actually get that momentum going and get into the habit and gain some experience with what it's like to look at something in your life and either eliminate it upgraded or replace it with a design that better suits the the expression of your calling um, use a physical example like actually physically go through your house and just look at each object like in your house every single little object say does this make any sense like is this what's the intention behind this make everything intentional and this will give you a little bit of a, a tangible practice, but then you can move on to, you know, some of your relationships or some of the dialogues in your relationships or um, whatever business or career you're working on. So, but sometimes I think it's helpful for people to start with something really tangible. Just look at an object wow. because the process is the same. You're comparing it to your calling, if you will. You're just holding it in contrast to the light of what lights you up and you see does it make sense for this to be in my house or not and where and then you start seeing you start getting these little intuitive psychic glimpses of the past like when you bought it where you bought it why you bought it who you were when you bought it what the intention behind it was what the unconsciousness behind it was and then you can sort of start clearing out your house in that way and then you can extend that into the more abstract or non-physical elements of your life if you will someone that's really aware and confident in the independence that they have because their fulfillment comes from the state of being being connected to their calling and they know they could if they had to express it in any condition whether they're sleeping on the floor or in a five-star mansion whether they have a paycheck or a lot of money or no money whatsoever once you realize that the only bodies that really matter to fulfill your calling in this world is the mental and physical body and so and you have these and so you're free. When you realize that, you can allow them, first of all, to become a crystallization, an expression of your calling more fully, fully saturated with an awareness of that state of being that's never dependent on other bodies, right? That's the first freedom as, as an entity, as a, as a body. It doesn't have to be a certain way. You just flow with the moment and you believe anything's possible. And if people come together with that intention, truly magical things happen. 
and all the reliances that you thought were helpful, they were actually anchors holding you back. It's a pretty clear indication. The more flexible you become. It doesn't matter that at a certain age or in a certain stage or phase of your life, you may not suddenly feel like, oh, actually, you know what feels conducive is for me to settle down for six months, stay in one location and not travel, you know, or move to this apartment and just stay there for a long period of time or be in a single relationship for a long period of time. So you may have a phase where that feels to be a more conducive environment for your calling, but it's not the same as an attachment. You're, you're still intuitively generating that and it's still from a state of flexibility. And if the next day it turns out to not be the case, you're not in a funk about it because your calling is not identified with the means you have chosen to express yourself through. You always keep that quote unquote separation between what you really are slash your calling and your circumstances. Always see how independent your state of being is. You don't need anything. If there's a confusion regarding, okay, how I'm going to monetize my calling, then e either you haven't really found your calling yet, or you're just not really that connected to it right now, because if you are connected to it, you're not, you, you don't care where you live next month. And so you don't care about how you'll get the money to live there next month, because you have no clue what next month is going to be like. Right? The more you the more you become an expression of your calling. Your body is your first vehicle, right? Your mind and body are the first avenues that house the calling. And so those need to be addressed first. Now, after years of practicing that, these bodies, these avenues, will become so fine-tuned to the calling that you are able to not need these bodies to be dependent on other bodies oh. of work, right? So you can take these bodies, those are your first rights to freedom, if you will. You can take these anywhere at any time, and you see that you can always express your calling into this world through these vehicles that are part of this world. So it doesn't matter where you go, where you are, you become less and less attached to having to be in the same place necessarily, or with the same person here or there, or with the same plan for the future. And this is a gradual process. Don't force yourself to go all out because there may be some backlash, which also you could address and deal with. It's not a big deal, ultimately. But take it at your own pace, but do experiment. What are you currently holding on to and projecting into the future? How far are you projecting into the future? And in most cases, you'll see that the people that are most, most connected to their calling, they're, they have the least of an idea of what's going to happen next month or next year truly being turned on by your calling versus sort of knowing about it, but still like, where am I going to live next month? And so then your intention is not truly to live from the calling moment to moment. And again, the calling is never a goal. It's always here now. It's always where you're coming from. So if sometimes an architecture of a lot of money, it's actually not conducive to always check in where you come from, right? Sometimes no money or no promise of money is a great architecture to always remind yourself where you're coming from and actually generate happiness there. So if, you, if that's not something you'd be willing to at least consider, I'm not saying you have to do it, it may not be aligned for every life, obviously, but to consider if it could be aligned for you. Realize what the source of your, your happiness actually is because you still believe it's in something. You still believe it's in security, certainty, a manifestation, a house, consistency, whatever it is. So then over time, you know, you'll find, you'll get reflections and it's not this, it's not that, it's not this, it's not that. If you can accelerate that learning process, that maturation process, and really through clear exercises using your imagination, really get clear to your entire psyche that what you really want and why you do everything you do is to be fulfilled. And then you realize that fulfillment is not the result of any of the things you're currently doing. Then suddenly you become willing to shift all that attentiveness to the calling, to focus on where you're living from, not where you're moving towards. And now everything will be a fresh, unique, flexible expression from your calling, not towards your calling. And then you can suddenly imagine, oh yeah, wait a second, now that I actually prioritize my fulfillment through my calling rather than trying to get somewhere because I still believe that that will give me happiness. Now that I've actually made that shift, now I can understand why someone would do that. 
because the happiness is not in the money, the stability, consistency. It's in living from the calling. And so sometimes the design of limiting how much money you make could actually be, or just limiting the consistency or the re reliability with which you get a paycheck, could actually be a great design in some cases for some periods of your life for certain deepenings in your calling. Trust life, flow with life, so that the challenge and the, the guidance system doesn't have to transfer into physical catalyst which is usually when stubborn people only begin to pay attention, is when things have become so materialized out of alignment that there's no other way for you than to pay attention or die, right? Or be completely unhappy. So don't go there. I mean, don't postpone it. Like if you notice you have a lack of belief, stop yourself. Don't even continue the dialogue, whatever the dialogue is or the project or the activity. Notice the lack of belief, make it a habit to, if, when you notice the lack of belief, that's the time to stop yourself. That's the time to check in, to pause. It's the best time because that's when it came up. Why have it come up, which is the function of the guidance system, and then shove it back in saying like, oh, thank you for showing it to me. Let's just wait till it arises again. And again, and again. And w when are you going to pay attention? When the consequences are harsh enough. And so your higher self is compassionate enough to give you all kinds of crap until you pay attention. You're all extremely creative and resourceful. You're just applying it in what's not possible. You're always imagining what's not possible, the doom and the gloom and the I can't and it's not because of this. Always seeing the obstacles, it stops the energy from moving into the physical body to actually make a difference, to change, to operate on inspiration, etc. So you're literally, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. As soon as you begin to focus, it's not even a belief. As soon as you begin to focus on something is not possible, you're beginning to believe it because you're beginning to make that real. See it, feel it, be it, operates 100% of the time. You just oftentimes don't know that you're doing it. So you need to make conscious what you're seeing. What are you picturing? It's so important. You gotta be able to alter consciously what it is you're picturing. And is that picture, again, every topic is two topics. It's either the lack of what you're imagining, the not possibility of it, or it's the abundance of it, or the possibility of it, or the presence, or the flow of it. Are you imagining the thing you're thinking about on the side of positivity, so to speak. So, and as soon as you shift that, this, all that creative energy and that resourcefulness suddenly becomes available in terms of what is possible. And as good as you were about worrying and not moving and getting stuck and planning out the next 40 years of your life, suddenly you're that great, all the next 40 years of your life, all that planning goes into the next two days. So you're squeezing all the creative energy of 40 years into the next 48 hours so much stuff you can come up with and then you find you have so much energy you do it again the next 48 hours right so you just carry those waves with ever greater realization of the capacity that you have as a creator just make sure that you check in with yourself what am i picturing what am i imagining is it of a positive nature or a negative nature very simple and it's not about you have to always feel good you can't feel bad it's not the typical positive negative conversation it's just Every topic can either be the abundance of it, the possibility of it, or the impossibility of it, or the lack thereof. And you're always imagining on one side of that equation with everything you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. You're either feeling it's not here yet, it's over there, not here, or you're feeling that will be really exciting, and I feel it here now. And so what's the action that's inspired from that, right? And this is so helpful to understand also when you are when you're living from your calling, when you really are in the state of being of your calling, you're supported by sort of this universal archetype of knowing everything is possible. When you're really connected, you don't have to play these games. But these games can be helpful because we all get lost sometimes in overthinking physical reality. So then it's good to check in, am I on the lack side of things or the possibility side of things? Always be on the possibility side of things. And you never feel like you're getting stuck and you'll never self-prophesize or create that. That's the guidance system right there. When you think of something that's truly in alignment with you, it's a complete yes. Because the calling, you might now you might have a reaction to that yes that's one of doubt, right? The mind may come up with stories about what about this, what about that, and go back into what's not possible. But the initial result, often when people are like, is it a yes or a no? I don't know. It, it may have been already a yes, but now you're over doubting it. But the instant that you think of something inspiring, if it's a yes in that moment, it usually is a 100% yes. Then the process of like resolving whatever 
lack of beliefs you have about that change is the process of upgrading yourself to match the vibration of that vision of that dream so that now you can constitute it and be it and actually act it out. Being distinctively aware of what's in alignment, what's not in alignment. So, and that includes, people forget that that includes their own talking, their own thinking. That's the most important part to put back in alignment is your own thinking, your own visualizing, how you're using your imagination. Because you're, you're always creating something. Whatever you're going to focus on or towards, that's what you're going to create. That's what you're going to see the possibility or impossibility of. So it's always a self-fulfilling prophecy. So you have to be the one, because no one else is going to do it for you, except in rare circumstances. But you have to be the one that monitors yourself. True witnessing, true observing, true checking in with yourself is absolutely devoid of judgment. Yet it has discernment. The more you gain confidence in your capacity to be the infinite creator, to not be affected by circumstances, and to bring to that a creative element, remembering it's a video game and you're already doomed, okay? The video game is going to end, it's going to break down, at some point it's not here anymore. You're not here to survive. You're already eternal. You're here to play. Don't mistake the eternal identity for the character in the video game. Right? And when, you're, when you give away the structures of your c current life, which are all man-made, then that emptiness is such a fruitful space from which to give birth to true creativity, true flow, true fulfillment. And you're fulfilled with nothing. You're just like, ah, oh, it just feels good to do this for someone or to create this or to spend way too many hours on one single detail of a trip you're planning for a few people when you should have been doing all these other things, right? But it felt so good, just obsessing. Yet the obsession was not lack-focused. It wasn't an impossibility. It wasn't a concern. It wasn't out of worry. It was absolutely out of sheer passion to perfect a single detail that will not be experienced by that person for longer than a split second. But what it causes in that person is so worth the experience that you're spending 15 hours trying to figure out how to create that one single detail in their life. And he felt better than ever, and you don't get shit in return. The more you get used to that space and you trust that space, the more the universe will provide for exactly everything that you need. Doesn't mean you shouldn't take action when an opportunity arises that's in alignment. You do. You just naturally operate. You naturally act. When you're thirsty, you naturally drink water. When an opportunity arises that's in alignment with your calling, you naturally take action. It's just natural action, skillful, natural unfoldment of the video game, right? But you're tuned in to the appropriate vibration that is in alignment with your fulfillment. And that creative empty space of giving away structures becomes almost addictive. You can almost start consuming that creative space. And you're going to be em in that empty space. You're going to be so creative and have so much fun that you feel so fulfilled in that state that your life, you just want to be more in that state over and over again, that space. And so you start losing the negative connotation to dropping structures in your life. You start building a positive relationship to emptiness, to uncertainty, to non-structure, because you know that in the space of non-structure, you experience yourself to the utmost, to the fullest. And from there, everything you create turns into gold. And it lights other people up. And it raises the vibration of everyone involved. Or everything involved. The rocks, the trees, the birds. Everyone in your vicinity gets upgraded. And so do you. Even just a little bit going in this direction is a great fucking leap, right? If you can make a small alteration to your life and make one that you feel confident in, that you can be consistent in, you will back yourself up with trust over time. You will build up that trust foundation. You will build experiences of confirmation that you are the infinite creator and that you can create anything and generate anything, that everything is possible and that you can trust the emptiness and come from your calling. You don't have to go towards it. You can't go towards it. You will experience this more and more if you just make a small adjustment now and then the next and then the next you build confidence and it's an accelerative curve.